Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in again to another episode of CivilianTacticalWeapons.com. Today's episode is actually going to be on the Thurian uh, 9mm carbine. This carbine is actually made by Thurian Defense. It's, uh, if you look at the way the rifle is designed, it looks very similar to an AR. Um, it uses these, uh, I think they're slightly modified Colt uh, uh, 9mm mags, the 32 round mags. It has uh, all the requirements as far as uh, federal requirements on barrel lengths, overall lengths. Um, however, keep in mind in your own uh, personal uh, locality, county, state, uh, this may or may not be legal. The, uh, the gun has uh, built-in flip-up sights. So as you can see here, it's got built-in sights. Um, the sights are adjustable for both windage and elevation. This is also a standard uh, Picatinny rail system on top, so you can go ahead and put whatever other optic you want to put on here, red dot scopes, things like that. Um, and really, the kind of the claim to fame for this particular gun, and I want to show you because you may not see this at your local gun store, is the fact that this gun um, is at a very particular price niche. This is around $700. Um, so it's a $700 rifle that's actually firing 9mm. It's in the same category for those of you viewers who are looking for an inexpensive gun to shoot. Um, I actually shot this entire video because of the request of some of my viewers who are complaining that all of my videos are geared towards, you know, you know larger purchases. Um, so what I wanted, to, first of all, to make sure that you understand the nature of this particular video. This is a very inexpensive, uh, fun little gun to shoot at the range. Uh, maybe if you live out in the county, this may be something you shoot in your backyard if it's okay with, your, uh, um, with the laws in your area. But it's designed, it's not designed for, you know, this is not something that you're going to see law enforcement use, uh, for example. Um, this is, uh, for the price niche that's at, it is a very good gun for um, the casual shooter. And if you're going to look at people who are asking me some things, trying to compare things to like uh, some of the Ruger uh, uh, rifles that accept the 9mm mags, uh, Beretta Storms, these are the types of guns that you would compare this to. Um, you're not going to compare this to some, you know, $3,000 rifle or something like that. So that being said, it does have some very good benefits. Um, the gun is very reliable. We shot Monarch ammo through it, which is kind of my uh, initial base of if a gun's uh, reliable or not. We shot uh, some Remington. We shot some of uh, the uh, uh, Winchester uh, Ranger ammo through it. It, uh, it actually, provide, it actually uh, proved to be very flawless. Uh, we had no malfunctions, no uh, you know, failure to feeds, nothing. I mean, ejection was clean, uh, no problems. We did rapid fire tests. In fact, in this video, which will be a little different than most of my videos, I'm not breaking apart the studio and range videos. They'll actually all be shown back to back. So watch through the entire video and you'll actually get to the range video portion of this too. The uh, gun, uh, all being said, is actually a fairly nice gun for what you're getting. Um, please don't confuse this again with something that, uh, you know, try to compare it unfairly to something that costs uh, significantly more. So. Normally, the way I hold this, I actually hold this gun with a, pretty much like an MP5 hold. So keep it pretty tucked pretty tight. I'm um, actually maybe even collapse the stock down a little bit to get in right behind it when I shoot it. Um, a couple things to note about this: these optics on the gun, I do not like at all. This is probably my uh, my biggest pet peeve with this gun. Um, when you're at uh, seven yards, 15 yards, um, this thing will you know cut out the center of the target, no problem, no issues. Um, once you get beyond that, it was actually significantly harder to get on target and be able to put really, really tight groups. I mean, I could shoot bullets after bullets in the uh, you know, 7 to 15 yard range uh, right around there pretty easily. Once I got 15 and beyond though, my big problem became the sights itself. So I really felt if I had like, uh, if I threw an EOTech on here or whatever, this would be a completely different story as far as uh, the distance shooting. And the reason why is there's a very, very small hole in the rear sight and the front sight peg, which is actually a, a sight adjustment, you rotate this to actually raise and lower it and then there's an adjustment to push this left and right for your windage and that's for your elevation. Um, this front peg pretty much completely gets covers up the back and when you're looking through it to get front sight picture, um, it's very difficult at uh, farther ranges. Closer ranges is not really a problem, but I couldn't even see my target anymore. This thing completely covered it up. So we did have pretty decent shot groups at 25 yards. We're hitting about um, two and a half inches. But I honestly believe that with the proper sights, uh, just shooting this gun a few times, that you could probably bring this down at 25 yards, down to inch groups, uh, without that much of an issue. 
the issue being is these sites. Uh, these sites are, are, are a bit of a problem. So this is a standard uh, Picatinny rail system. Um, I did initially play around with throwing a 516, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, EOTech 516 on top of it, fit perfectly. Um, there's no problem with putting whatever optics you want on it. A um, couple things to note, this does not have a the, uh, last shot bolt open. I mean, it will actually stay, when this gun has been fired, this gun's been fired. After the last round's been fired, you'll see that it'll actually come completely closed. So, um, some of you may be uh, used to a gun that has an open bolt. Um, definitely, this is not one of them. The other thing too is when you load this gun, I did notice this. When you load this gun, you load the ammunition up. You want to go ahead and cycle the chamber to chamber it in. It has a little catch here. Let me rotate the gun this way. It has a little catch here that when you pull and you push it in, it'll actually stay open. Um, this is good for all the ranges will have you say, you know, you know, uh, open the chamber, lay it out so everyone, you know, Grange Master can come by and make sure all the guns are empty. It's good for that. It is not good for to then go like this and then pull it out a little bit, letting it cycle forward and thinking that's going to cycle the gun uh, properly. If you do that, I've actually been able to do a, a you know, failure to feed that way. If you, however, just load it where you take the magazine, stick it in, and then cycle it, it works solid every single time. So for those of you who may be looking into that, make sure you do add that into your um, particular tactic, tactics with this particular gun as far as uh, uh, handling of the firearm. Um, because as long as you do it the way I showed you, there's really no issues with it. You know, you have your standard uh, safe uh, fire positions, um, same like you would have in any AR, so that's not really an issue, not really any training here. In fact, pretty much the entire lower will accept. Uh, you can drop different trigger groups. We had the, uh, uh, they offer this gun with the uh, um, Timney trigger system. Uh, I strongly recommend you don't use the Timney trigger. The Timney trigger has a problem of uh, going burst fire. In fact, uh, they even acknowledge it in their manual. Um, it's not a good idea to have a trigger that's so sensitive and has so many problems that you can have that type of an issue. So this is just the factory trigger what we shot it with. So you'll see the video up front up here, which will actually have the uh, following here, which actually show you the range shoot, and you'll actually see how this gun performs. You can see shot groups within uh, seven. We talked about uh, five shot group, about a little less than an inch. What you're gonna do is go ahead and shoot it down to uh, shoot it down to about 25 yards. I think my only complaint about this gun has actually been the magazines. A lot of times the lip catches on the magazine. Um, it's not really But uh, if you push down the back, you can really get it stuck. You get it jammed like that pretty easily. Of course, it's something you can have done with every magazine, but for some reason, uh, you know, I have MP5 mags and I don't have this problem with it. In fact, I just jammed it up there pretty good, so I gotta pop it back out. You want to make sure you get it straight. Okay. Sears down at 25 yards. See, it keeps it at a two and a half inch. Uh, not, too, uh, not too bad. What I want to do is show you a quick shoot. shoot. How the gun at? I mean, it's very no problem with the uh, rapid fire. Okay. Anyway, if you have any questions, please email me at info at civilian.weapons.com, and I hope to see you next week.